Yeah. Straight to 13. All right. So, that was a fun one. Before we get to 13, just to clarify, we did this a little bit yesterday. I showed you the gist of it. I'm going to show you the gist one more time. All right. So, the idea that we're going to do on 13, and yes, my triangle is bold. I made it thick with three C's. It's the same as yours, though. Okay. Um, the idea that we're doing today is that, again, a while ago we were given this proof, right? That if you have a triangle, remember we can always find a midpoint, right? Any, any line we can always cut in half, right? So we can say let there be midpoints, right? We can do that. So if we're given the midpoints of a triangle and those segments between them, right, if we connect them up, we pro uh, proved that a while ago that this triangle on the top will be similar to the big triangle, right? We proved that. And that's because the small triangle on the top has an angle, right? And it shares it with the big triangle here. And then the sides are proportional by double, right? So this is similar to this, meaning we've got a bunch of congruent angles going on, right? And so that means that this line here will be parallel to this line here. Those will be parallel. And this line here will be parallel to this line here. And we know that this will be parallel to this. And we proved that a while ago. And the reason is because we have similar triangles, right? This is similar to this, so they have the same angles. If they have the same angles here and here, then by cap converse, these are parallel, right? So on and so forth, right? Um, <clears throat> we also proved that if these triangles are similar, if this is half and this is double, then this should be half and that's double, right? So that is half of this side. Same thing here. This will be half of the yellow side. And this will be half of the purple side. Right? So all of that was a theorem. We just never called it anything. And it's called the medial triangle theorem. And the reason for that is because when you connect the mid segments, right? You make the mid segments, connect the midpoints of a triangle, you create a triangle in the middle called the medial triangle. And the medial triangle theorem just basically says that these sides will be parallel, right? And the opposite sides here and here will be half and double, right? So it just gets you all this for free. So instead of doing the whole proof to get it, you can just get it from this, OK? Today we're doing the opposite of that, the converse, basically. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the triangle. And we're going to say, let this line that I'm going to draw be parallel to this one. What? What? Uh, I'll get it. I didn't have enough for everybody. I'll get it for you when it's prints. So, these are going to be parallel. I'm going to create a line that's parallel to this guy. Is that cool? All right, we can always do that. So these guys are parallel. I can always make a line parallel to this, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put it over here. So these guys will be parallel. And lastly, I'm going to make a line parallel to this. So these will be parallel. What? Yeah, this makes another triangle, right? So if my original triangle was called A, B, C, I can call my new triangle maybe like D, E, F. And that's a medial triangle, right? Yes? Okay, I don't know why, but I just like don't get that. Okay. So I started with the triangle, and I drew a line that's parallel to this side, a line that's parallel to this side, and a line that's parallel to this side. And it makes another triangle, right? I just drew parallel lines but it here and here. To be on the midpoint. It will end up being. I'll show that. Okay. So I just drew parallel lines. Something parallel to that. No, it's okay. Something parallel to this. It's totally fine. Are you proving anything right now? Not yet. No. I'm just showing you what we're going to be doing today. Okay. So I created some parallel lines, which created another triangle, which means that this is the medial triangle of this guy, right? So that's the medial triangle. Now we know by medial triangle theorem that these guys will be parallel and they'll be half of each other. So if this is, right, this, then that'll be half. Yes? So wait, why did you, like, put it on the outside of the triangle? Um, and I'll, sh I'll show you why. I'm going to get there. Okay. okay. So I did this, right? I'm totally allowed to make parallel lines, right? And that makes this medial, which means this is half of this, is half of this right? The yellow will be half of the yellow. And the green here will be half of the green here. Right? So by medial triangle theorem converse, we get all that stuff, right? Awesome. Now, here's the logic for today. A, B, and C. 
Aren't they the midpoints, like Kalo's pointing out? Aren't they the midpoints of the bigger triangle? They are, aren't they, by definition, right? So if I were to draw a line from A, the midpoint, right, at 90 degrees, like this. What? I know you are. I know you are. This would be 90. So I'm drawing a line from A at 90 degrees. Totally can do that whenever I want, right? I just made a line that's perpendicular to the green line. Fair, right? Now, that line isn't just perpendicular. It's also the perpendicular bisector, right? So keep that in mind. Aren't these two lines parallel, right? And the line I drew goes through them. So it's a transversal, right? So if this is 90 by alternate interior angles, right? Inside the parallels, opposite sides of the transversal, this must be 90 as well. Cool? Now pause, pretty much. So pause. I know, I know, I know. So, if I only highlight a portion of this line, that's vertex to 90. What kind of a line is that? What do we call that? Yep, it's vertex to 90. And what kind of line is that? You're right. Nope, no, it doesn't bisect this side, unfortunately. So it's not a perpendicular bisector. It's just a perpendicular. What do we call those? Orthogonals. So that's an orthogonal. Today we're proving orthogonals of a triangle are concurrent. So look, I just made an orthogonal by doing that, right? Now, I could have made an orthogonal earlier, but the point is this. The perpendicular bisectors of the big triangle are the orthogonals of the small triangle. Now, we proved yesterday perpendicular bisectors always intersect at a point, right? So if these are always going to intersect to the point, then these will, again. I'm jumping the gun a little bit. Let me back up. We cool this? All right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing here. 90 degrees from there, right? So it says me. Okay. okay, what if they generally don't understand? What do you mean? Anything. So if that's the case, we need to back up and go, where did I lose you? Did, did I lose you at the parallel lines? Drawing these parallel? Why did you draw them? Um, because I'm going to use it as part of my proof. Okay. Okay. So if they're parallel, I know if these guys are parallel, then this will be half of this, this will be half of this, this will be half of that. That's all I did. Why? How we proved that two weeks ago, that it would be that. Yeah, I have no idea what went on two weeks ago. Then accept it as true for now, and then go back two weeks ago and retake that quiz, and, I'll, and you'll prove why. So accept it as true for now. It's a theorem, right? Yeah, sure. Okay. So then I drew a line from here, left at 90, because I wanted it to, OK? So that's 90. This is 90 by alternate interior. Same thing here. Transversal, two parallels, right? So if that's 90, then this will be 90, which means this is an orthogonal, right? Vertex to 90. Same thing here, leaving B. And I'm going to cheat a little bit, because I didn't draw these perfectly, right? It should go through here. That's totally 90. That's totally 90 degrees. Right there is a 90 degree line, without a doubt. 90 degrees, never seen anything better. All right, so this is 90, right? Which means this is 90 by alternate interior, right? Two parallel lines, transversal, okay? Which means this is an orthogonal. And we know perpendicular bisectors always intersect at one point. We proved that yesterday, right? So if they intersect at one point, so do my orthogonals of the small triangle. Okay. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it for real. But I, that's the idea. Okay. I'm going to draw per parallel lines, and that'll create a bigger triangle, which means I have a, this situation, right? So that means that these are midpoints, right? A, B, and C, which means when I draw this perpendicular, I draw a perpendicular bisector, right? And where they intersect will be where the orthogonals of the original triangle, the OG triangle, intersect. Okay. So let's do it for real this time. Let's look at number 13. My triangle's thick with three Cs. Yours isn't, sorry. Also, your letters are in a different location. But if you just want to watch, that's fine. I had to remake this because, remember, Microsoft Word wasn't saving. I had to make it this morning over again. And I put the letters in a different spot. My bad. OK? So here's what I'm going to do. First things first. That's a medial triangle of a bigger triangle. I'm going to show you which triangle, right? So I'm going to make a line parallel to this. So get out my ruler. I'm going to try to make this actually parallel as possible, like 
this looks like parallel. Okay. And I'll do letters later. But I'm going to say that this is parallel to that. Give me another color to do. Red. Lime green. This is going to hurt. Why does that hurt? Parallel to this, right? I'm going to try to make it parallel. Scoot on over without changing the angle. Okay. Hopefully that's parallel. It doesn't have to actually be parallel. Right? And then let there be, give me another color. Dark blue. I'm going to do a line parallel to this guy. Good choice. You're welcome. Wow. Not thanks, but you're welcome. Cobalt, nice. So those are parallel, right? So I just let those be. Now, writing this isn't that bad, because after I make these lines, I'm just going to call that D, call that E, and call that F. I'm going to make these bigger so you can actually see what they are. Okay. So I'm going to say, let there be. Let there be, because I'm just drawing parallel lines. I didn't know where they'd intersect. Right? I have one question. Yeah? So like the parallel marks, like they're, like they're parallel. If we do color, do we just do one? Yep, mm -hmm. one arrow. Yep, you can do one arrow if you do color. Right? So let there be a line parallel. I'm going to do the yellow one first. I want CB to be parallel to this new line I created. What line is this? D-A-E. Right? We say all three so we know it goes through A, right? Cool. I did that in black because writing in yellow would be no bueno. Okay? Let's do the blue one next. So for the blue one, let there be CA parallel to what? FBE. It's a bit of alphabet soup, but what we're doing is not hard, right? We just made parallels, right? Now I just got to copy everything down. Now I got to do the green. I'll do that in darker green. Um, we want AB. And create a parallel line. DCF. DCF, yeah. All right. Cool. So that was our first step. We just created parallel lines. Now we know by medial triangle theorem, converse, right? That's a medial triangle, right? It's a mouthful, but that's really the only thing you gotta study. So I'm gonna try and keep it on here as best as possible. By medial triangle theorem converse. I'll be very nice about this because we never really gave that a name. Okay, I'll be very nice about that in the quiz. We know this, right? This will be half of the opposite side, right? So I'm going to write that. AC is congruent to FB, right? BF. And BE. Again, lots of letters, but not hard, right? I also know that this is half of this. So AB is congruent to those two pieces. What are the two pieces? CD and CF, right? I try to do alphabetical when I can. All right, and lastly, this guy, right? So, oh, I got to do that in black. So BC congruent to what? AD and AE. Whoever made the beginning of the alphabet rhyme should be shot. I guess we could use a uh, whiskey tango fo foxtrot, right? Like Bravo, Charlie, Alpha, Delta. Uh, right. All right, cool. So we get that. It's a lot, right? But, and it, but it's not really like a lot of thinking, right? We do parallels, then we get all this for free. Now, remember what I did last time? I created some perpendiculars. So I'm going to create a perpendicular from here because B is the midpoint, right? Cool. That looks like 90. All right, or I mean, I made it 90. I shouldn't say it looks like it. I made it 90. Cool. Now, I'm going to have to put some letters down, right? But I'm going to do that all at the end. When I do this for real, I'll do it all at once and then write stuff. Here, I'm just going to do one of these at a time, okay? So, two parallels, right? Transversal. So, alternate interior. These two are 90. Are you seeing it? Inside the parallels opposite sides of the transversal, right? Alternate interior. So I get this. I would highly encourage you to do the original in color and the one that you make later not. 
right? Or, or vice versa, versa. Okay. So yeah. we know that. I'm going to do the same thing for all of these. Okay. I'm going to do a bunch of these, and then we'll go back and write it all in. Okay. For you, maybe you wouldn't do that, but I'm going to do it all at once. Or I'm not going to do it all at once. That way, uh, you guys can see it individually. Cool. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing for all the sides. So let's draw a perpendicular bisector here. Boop. According to me, I wanted that to be 90. Which means by alternate interior angle theorem, since these two are parallel, these are both going to be 90 by alternate interior angles. So far, so good. Now, they connect at some point, right? So let's call that K just for now. I don't know. I like using K. We'll come back to that later. I'm going to draw my last one in. So I did B, I did C, I got to go from A, right? So from here at 90, looks like 90 to me. I'm cheating a little bit. OK. So that's 90 according to me. And we shouldn't be surprised. They can all go through K. That's allowed. We proved earlier that they're always going to go through K, right? The perpendicular bisectors all intersect at one point. So now I've got this, which means this is 90, right? Two parallels, transversal, alternate interior. Okay. So how do I write all that? Well, first I need some letters. So let's call things things. So C, K, and then the point where it intersects on this other side. I've used up to F, so I'm going to call that point G. Okay. You can call it whatever you want. For this one, A, K, next letter is H, right, because I use G. I don't want to use H because H and I, right, you can turn them on their sides. Depending on which way I go, it's going to be weird, right? So I'm going to skip straight to J. And then this one is B, K. I already use K, so I got to use L, right? Cool. Right? So now I'm going to write that I made those. So let there be, right, let C, K, G be the perpendicular bisector of, so C, K, G. What side of the big triangle is CKG perpendicular with? What side? DCF, right? It's perpendicular with DCF, right? The green. So I'm going to write that. DCF. Gotcha. You're doing a good job today, by the way. So CKG, now let's do AKJ. AKJ. Yeah, just not in here. What's it perpendicular to? What side of the triangle? DAE. Six hour, you guys are doing amazingly. Well done. Did you, like, not have to go halfway through? Like, actually, I don't have to go anymore, right? That's, what I, that's the joke. All right, so BKL. No, no, it's cool. I just made the joke right before you, but yes. BKL, perpendicular with what side of the big triangle? FBE. Hit it. Okay. And we know they intersect at K because they all have K, right? Cool. All right. Awesome. So how did I get the right angles? Well, I, I got one from here, right? The other I got from what theorem? Alternate interior angles. So I got to match these up, which is why I told you to color code dark and then the one that goes with it is open, right? So that's angle K, C, F. So close to KFC. So close. So KCF congruent to angle this guy, right? By alternate interior. They go together. So I'm going to call it KGA. All right, next one. Let's go uh, KBE. Must be congruent to, okay, this one and this one go together. So that's KLC. Again, alphabet soup, but what we're doing is not complicated, right? It's just a lot of writing. So it's hard, not because it's technical, but because it's hard to see it, right? So last one, I did KCF, I did KBF, or KBE, I need this one, right? So this angle is KAE. And it's going to go with this angle, KJC. So just writing down what I did. So by definition, we're going to skip over this part because it's by definition. I'm being nice on this, OK? By definition, where's my minty green? 
Isn't this an orthogonal by definition? Yes. And isn't this an orthogonal by definition? And this is an orthogonal by definition? So all of those, BKL and CKG and AKJ are orthogonal. So by definition, I could write by definition, AKJ is an orthogonal, CKG is an orthogonal, BKL is an orthogonal. I'm going to skip that. Okay. And they all have K in them, right? So they must intersect at K, so therefore they're concurrent. So our last thing we write is therefore the orthogonals of triangle ABC are concurrent. And we're done. So, alphabet soup. Oh my god, yes, right? Well, what do we do? We created parallels. We got free congruency, right? Then we made perpendicular bisectors. And then we did alternate interior angles. We're done. In fact, we only use one theorem, right? I mean, I guess this is a theorem. Basically, all this was just created by us, right? And we use alternate interior and we're done. Parallels. Medial triangle means you get congruent stuff. Perpendicular bisectors I'm creating. Alternate interior, we win. How do you feel? Did you run through the alternate interior angles again? Uh-huh. See how these two lines are parallel? The two green ones, dark green. Here, let me use the blues. The two blues, they're parallel, right? Okay. I drew this line in earlier, right? And that was 90. That's a transversal between these two. Inside the parallels, opposite sides of the transversal, alternate interior angles, congruent. If I've got this, right, these will be congruent alternate interior, okay? If this angle's this, then that angle will be that. So two parallels, this one and this one will be congruent because they're on the same, they're on opposite sides of this transversal. Are we seeing that? For real? Okay, because once I get this garbage on here, it's hard to see what I actually did, right? But as you go in real time, it makes sense, which is why I record video, right? So you can go back, pause, and see where I was before I had this mess on here, right? I would highly recommend watching this one if you're confused about what's going on here. Do you want to see it again? I can do it without writing, because the writing's basically the same. Do you want to see it again or no? What do you feel? Is there something out about this? There is, a little bit. I've got a little bit of a worksheet for you. I'll let you digest this for a second. If you want to see it again, that's cool. I'm going to go start the copy. Okay. That's not good. Um, would you like to see it again, Kayla? I don't know. Don't study the letters, because the letters we all made up, right? We put them in. Draw your parallels. That creates a big triangle and a small triangle. So we've got this relationship, right? Two to one, two to one, two to one. Draw your 90s, alternate interior, win. I got everything except for the alternate interior angles. Right, that's seeing the that's the that's hard part. I if I do it again, I can slow-mo that and show you, okay? Hey, see, the prank I get it. I like understand what you're doing, mm -hmm. how okay. you're doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. But the issue is I right. cannot do that myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and then we win. Four things. One, draw parallels. Call them what you want. I, I, when I'm done, it looks like garbage. Don't focus on that. I'm going to do it one more time, okay? We're going to draw parallels. That'll give us a big triangle and a small triangle, which means we get two to one ratio, right? Then we draw perpendiculars. Crisscross, right? Alternate interior. And we win. Those are the four things you need to know. The letters will come naturally. They will. You gotta practice it, right? I'd try it at least once before the quiz and compare it, right? But that's the idea. So I'm gonna but do it one more time. Know where to start? Well, for this particular theorem, you wouldn't know this unless someone showed it, right? Someone really clever came up with this idea to prove it, right? And there's lots of ways to prove it, but this is the easiest way to prove orthogonals are concurrent. Right? What? You're probably already what? 
How long is the quiz going to be? Much shorter than this packet. Always is. I don't know. I've made it. I have to make it. I have to make the review guide tonight, and then I'll cut that down. Right. Um, not everything that's in that packet, but some of those things. The review guide is basically just going to be that packet again, and we're going to sit here tomorrow and say which ones do you want to see again. Right. I mean, it's a proof, right? I could give you a different looking triangle, but you know, you know what I mean, right? It's not like algebra; we can just change all the numbers, right? So let's see it again. Because we got time. Um, where's my other copies? Yeah, yeah. Um, disclaimer, homeroom today, uh, Royer's homeroom will be in here. They will. They'll also be here Friday. I apologize for that. She has to dip. Okay. I'm going to sit in her I'm sorry. Yes, please. Yeah, if you want pens or whatever to do this, that's great. Okay. Go ahead. We got time. I reviewed uh, number uh, or page 12 with every other class. We skipped that for you guys. So we're a little bit ahead. Page 12. Yeah, page 12. Okay. While, okay. while you're grabbing yeah. markers, I'm yeah, going to go grab the other things. Okay. 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 The bicycle is easy. Tana. What? Does that mean a fight? No, like he went over, like Christian went on the quiz and Christian went on the quiz. All right, and if you're freaking out about, out about the thing that I gave you, who does that one, by the way, raise your hand? Quit. Pump it in the bank. Oh, wait, no, right, I have one. These are actually very easy if you know what you're doing. They're going to look impossible at first, and then you'll be like, oh my god, I hope there's a million of these. I need one. Matt, so I'm assuming that we're not reviewing the whole movement? Why? I have one, I just said that. Oh, my bad. No, we can review it. I'm just saying, if you oh, just quit, I'm not, I didn't say well, that. Right, but he needs help with the same thing. I'll review anything. Like, I review with, like, I review with algebra yeah, students, basic well, geometry students, and geometry all at the same time. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm really regretting that. I'm not. I tried. I paid attention. I got nothing but love for you. I really do. I really do. Most of this stuff is simple, but number five is where it. You know, you know what I mean? It, if you get it, it's easy. But if you don't, it's impossible. There's no middle ground, right? This, this ain't hard. The last Memorization is the middle ground. No, no, man. Memorizing all this? Yeah, good luck. I can do it. No way. No way. No way. Memorize all this? You have to understand. You have to understand what you're trying to accomplish, right? If I get 100, you give me a poker set I want. You get 100? Yeah, I'll, I'll buy that poker set for you. That's a deal. That's a deal. I hope you get 100. I hope I'm paying for it. I want part of it. All right. All right. So here we go. First thing we got to do is draw our parallels, right? You need more? No, I'm getting paid. Oh, okay, yeah. If you, need a, if you need a protractor, go grab one. Professional tractor. So what colors do you want to use this time? Because this is probably going to go up on the wall. Blue, pink, and purple. So like this pink? This pink? Do it in a darker Darker? Like this? That's the darkest pink I have. Um, you don't want them too bright. You just want like cool tones. And dark purple? Why not like like bright purple? Like one's a royal blue. Right? 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 Okay. Yeah, you change it. I don't know if I have a nice pretty pink or pretty purple. That's Smurfette. Um, it's close, but not quite. I got this from from Riley, so I don't. I think I like one of them. All right, so, Jenna, not in class, in the privacy of your own home. All right, so, all right, guys, here we go. Thank you, much. shut the door for me because I'm yelling, all right, I'm loud. So, I'm going to draw parallels, right? So, guys, here we go, bring it back in, bring it back in. I'm going to draw some parallels. I'm going to draw a line parallel to AC. Whoa. <laughs> Probably not. I'm going to try. Okay. So that's like parallel. Okay. Oh, God. It's nine years old. It's, it's mixed in. Sorry. All right. I'm going to let those be parallel. I'm going to put my advice to you is put letters down later. All right. Get all three of these parallels and then do letters. Okay. Uh, you wanted me to use blue, so I'll use blue. So another parallel line. This one's the hard one because my ruler isn't as wide as the triangle here. Anyways, Yikes. Okay, cool. So that's parallel. That's the easiest part of this. That's three points. Okay. Drawing the 
And then this. And they don't have to actually be parallel, right? It just helps. Right? The pink and the purple look like the exact same. Should we switch? Dark purple? Shut up, Laney. God. No, it's not. Us. <laughs> Fluffer, that was the stupidest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> okay, shut up. All right. So, these are parallel. <laughs> Stop it. Okay? So, now let's call these things. I'm going to use D, E, and F, right? That seems to be the next logical thing. Okay, shut up. Uh, I never do this, but yes. I know, but I pay extra for these. Okay. All right, so we're good. So, now we know, uh, let's, let's write this out. So, I need pink, purple, and blue. So, let's talk about the blue ones first. I made a line that's parallel to AB. Guys, I can go on to the next thing. I'm totally fine with that. If you feel good about this, I'll move on. But if you don't feel good, then shut up and watch. Right? Otherwise, I'm wasting my time. Like, I've already recorded this four other times today. Okay. So, AB, parallel to what? Let's include the C so we know that it goes through C. Right? I didn't just have it out over here. I had it right here. So, include the C. Three letters, okay? E, C, D. Okay? What is A, C parallel to? D, E, or D, Yep, D, B, E. And then B, C, I made parallel to what? No, Matt, it's, it's an F. Oh, it's an F. I'm, I'm just blind. Just like your grade. Okay. What is B, C parallel to? E A F. Cool. So let there be these, right? Let this happen. Right. Ta-da. Now, I'm gonna highlight these because we're gonna use them later. And things are gonna get crazy, right? Now we know by medial triangle theorem converse. That's the weird one, right? That basically all these things are congruent, right? So I'm gonna say by medial. Triangle, theorem, converse. I'm going to forget medial. It's okay. I'm going to be very generous with that. Very. We never officially named it. We just proved it. So I know that this and this will be congruent. All three of those. So I'm going to write that out. So you can tell me that most of the stuff that we're doing have made up. What do you mean? The medial triangle theorem He's not even a real math teacher. That what do you mean made up? You just said we basically oh, made that's up real. Right no, we didn't. Uh, I gave you the name for it, which we just never gave you the name before. We proved it, but I never told you what you were proving. Oh, so. All right. Cool. All right. Next, I'm going to do the purple BC. What's BC congruent to? Help me out. I'm going. It's kind of slow. Oh. E A. E A, right? And A F. Nice. <laughs> All right, and AB is congruent to what? E, C, C, D. Cool. Red. Wow. All right, so that's just what we did. Now, we know by definition that means C, A, and B are midpoints, right? Of the bigger triangle. Now I'm going to draw my perpendiculars, right? Dan, are you with me? Okay. Guys, I'm doing this for you. Schlaffer, put it away. That's what she said. All right. So now I'm going to draw a perpendicular bisector here and here. Uh, Justice, this is for you because we're going to get the alternate interior coming up, right? Okay. All right. So I'm going to let there be a perpendicular line right here. I'm not going to say that yet because I need letters, and I want to do my letters at the end. Okay? So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to say, look, parallels, right? This line I drew is a transversal through them, right? So inside the parallels, opposite side of the transversal, these are going to be 90. My alternate interior angles. Alternate, alternate sides, interior, inside. Rad? Rad. Okay, I'm going to leave that one open so we can identify it, right? So I'm going to do the same thing for all these. I'm going to draw a perpendicular line here. And then again, by alternate interior angles, 
two transver uh, two parallels, transversal, opposite sides, right? Alternate interior. Cool. Where they intersect, I'm going to call point K. <laughs> Just because it works out nicely. Gentlemen, you're doing really well. I don't know. And then I'm going to do this. Okay, again, totally 90. This is totally a 90 degree angle going through here. Totally 90 degrees right here. Totally 90. If I could actually draw them perfectly parallel, it would work out. So that's 90. So justice, two parallels, opposite sides, right? Do you see that one the best? This side and this side. Two parallels, transversal, opposite sides. Two parallels, transversal. It's between the two purples, right? Red. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Red, red, red. So there we go. Now, to write all that, right, I'm going to, I got to put some letters down. I've already got C, K, and then I'm going to make this a G, because that's my next letter I haven't used. So what you need is the point in the middle that they all intersect, and then where they hit the middle, the small triangle, right? So I, get, I need C, K, and G. I need B, K, and, can't use H, can't use I, can use J, right? And then A, K, and L. Cool. Right? So how do I make all that happen? I say let there be, again, still I'll let, right? But I'll write it. Let A, K, L, or let's, yeah, let's do A, K, L, be a perpendicular bisector of C, L, B. We cool with that? That's my purple, guys. Sorry, I didn't do it in purple. Cool. A, K, L, be the perpendicular bisector. Oh, crap, I did it wrong. A, K, L, perpendicular bisector to this guy, right? Yes. Right, sorry, it goes to this guy. I forgot to mark these guys. So A, K, L, perpendicular bisects to this guy, right? It's perpendicular and cuts it in half. So let me rewrite that, and I'll write it in purple this time. A, K, L, perpendicular bisector with E, A, F. We better now? Okay. Now let's do blue. So this guy, right? That's C, K, G. Uh -huh. Well, it's a medical thing. ECD. People with heart problems, you found that funny, I hope. All right. I don't say it around Stern, so I'll get better. I was born with a heart issue, so is my sister. All right, I did purple, I did blue. Focus, stay focused. Lastly, the pink. That's JKB, or let's do BKJ, alphabetical if I can. Perpendicular bisector of DBF, right? Don't get messed up like I did. All right, so let that be, right? And now by alternate interior angles, right? We get all those guys. So by alternate interior angles theorem, angle KCD is congruent. This guy went with this guy, right? That's angle KGA. And this guy, KBF, alternate interior angles. This and this goes together, KJC. And this guy, that's angle KAE. Must be congruent to this guy down here, uh, KLB. Or BLK. I'll do KLB. And all the others with K first. And then the last thing I do, because this is an orthogonal, right? Vertex to 90. This is an orthogonal, vertex to 90. This is an orthogonal, vertex to 90. And they all intersect at K. So therefore, the orthogonal. Ah, one more, yep. Good choice for the highlighting the orthogonals. The orthogonals of triangle ABC are concurrent at K, but all I need is concurrent, right? 
swag box. And this is where, if I were doing this on the board and I was doing it in my old school, I'd have an expo marker in my hand and I would just like slam it down to the ground, right? Spike the football. You can still have room. Right? So I drop it out. Woo! But I'm doing it anymore. Because my janitors hated me because there would always be like stains of like splattered expo marker. I you do this on the whiteboard? I like this a lot better. I, I wish, like, it's not good for my gut because I'm sitting the whole time, but, like, walking around class would be entertaining. Way easier okay. when you can move around, right? I gotta captivate an audience with math, right? And while sitting. Hard to do, but I got the pipes for it, usually. All right, so. Wanna take a picture or no? Yeah. I like the first one better, and you guys hated my colors. Just saying. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> Why? Because it has black in it? <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Laney. <laughs> We're not done. Sit down. We are not done. Get out that worksheet. Get out that worksheet. If we don't get it done, it's homework. Uh, yeah. Here we go. It's easy if you know what you're doing, and if you don't, it's impossible. Let's go over it so you know what you're doing. <laughs> look at number one on the worksheet. Okay, first of all, what are we even looking at? What must G be? What center must that be? We have angle bisectors, right? Are those orthogonals? No, because they don't go from the vertex to 90, right? So those are angle bisectors. And where do the angle bisectors intersect? What center is that? The in center, very good. And the in center is called the in center because why? There's inscribed circle. I swear to God, if someone says that again, all of them are centers. No, it's not the center of mass. Don't say it's in the center. All of them are technically in the center. So G is inside a circle that's inscribed, right? Inscribed circle. So if this is a circle. What must the blue lines be? They're going from the center of the circle to the outside. They're radii, which means if one of them's five, they're all five. All right, so that's five. I'm going to power through it. That's adorable. <laughs> Very cute. That's not what it looked like as a child. I peaked in high school. All right. So. All right, guys. How are we going to find out what Y is? It's diameter. It'd be twice of this, but that's not X. All right. What kind of triangle is this? A right triangle, so Pfag, right? Is Y the hypotenuse or a leg? Hypotenuse because it's crossing the 90. So it's going to be 5 squared plus 12 squared equals y squared, right? That's 25 plus 144. What's 25 plus 144? What? You think we know math? Well, you add 20 and add 5. How many? 169. Nice. Now, what's the root of 169? Square root of 40. 13. You remember, right? Yeah. It's 13. So why is 13? Oh, I'm gonna wait for four seconds and I see that. <laughs> I what? Sure. What? Perfect. Okay. G is the circumcenter. Hey, he said you can't leave. Sit down. G is the circumcenter. If the circumcenter's on the triangle, what kind of triangle must this be? Circumcised. When is the circumcenter on the triangle? Acute, right, or obtuse? Obtuse. Oh, it's cute. I know. When is it on the triangle? When is the circumcenter on the triangle? Oh, right. So this is a right triangle. Best of luck. Do this on your own. These will be similar to ones we have on the quiz. You're welcome. We'll review these tomorrow, but hopefully you're doing well on your own at home. Yes. Whoa. All right, who else? Who am I already passed for? You. Do you share homeroom or no? Okay. Yep, that's right. And then Rosie.
Alright. 